Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Sage Advice. My name is Anessa, and I am an indie author from Toronto, Canada, and I publish under the pen name A and Sage. I write fantasy, sci-fi, and pretty much anything paranormal. And in this particular series, if you are new to the channel, we are talking about some and all of the mistakes that I made on my self-publishing journey in the hopes that you can learn from all the things that I did wrong. Um, today, we will be talking about social media for authors and some of the tips that I have for you if you're just starting out um, to use social media as a way to promote your books, get yourself out there, or just get to know the entire business of authorship. Um, if you enjoy videos like this, make sure that you are subscribed and hit the bell notification and give this video a thumbs up probably towards the end when you've had a chance to actually watch it. So with all of that out of the way, let's talk about social media for authors. Um, it might be daunting, the whole social media world. There's so much out there, right? Um, everybody's doing something. Everybody talks about some platform that's working for them. And so it's very easy to kind of get sucked into the hype of it and not hype in a bad way. A lot of the hype is very much real and it does very much work, but not all of it works for everybody. So we can start this Sage Advice video with my mistake when I first started. Um, I tried too hard when I first started on my journey as an author to imitate what other people were doing. Um, I saw somebody that was succeeding on a social media platform or posting certain posts that were getting a lot of traction and engagement and kind of um, transferring into sales. And so I tried to do the same thing. Um, it seems like a good plan, right? Wrong. <laughs> because what they were posting came natural to them and it did not come natural to me because I was not them. Um, I had my own interests, my own ways of doing things, um, my own topics of conversation that I wanted to talk about. And so when I was trying to mimic what somebody else was doing, it came out very false. Um, it came out really dry. Um, there was no life behind it. Um, and I very much came out as a poser, right? <laughs> so you don't want to do that. Um, so what can you do to kind of ease into social media? Um, you might want to limit where you show up, um, either at the beginning or all the time. Um, I know a lot of authors that only have one or two social media channels and they do very well. You don't need to be everywhere. With that said, you want to figure out where your readers will be and you want to show up there. Um, so, for example, if you write YA or really steamy stuff, very different, I know. But TikTok is huge for both of those genres. So that might be a social media you want to try. Um, if you have just stunning, beautiful, like need to hold in your hands covers, Instagram is great. It's a platform that is very much um, visually driven. Um, if you want to form a community, if you want to interact with your readers, um, if you want to interact with other authors, if you want to really um, show up every day and talk to your readers as though you were talking to them one-on-one, -on -one, then you might want to try Facebook. Um, now, if you follow a lot of different topics and you want to just get like a lot on any kind of topic that might be out there, then Twitter might be for you. I will say I have personally... Um, I have no interest in Twitter. <laughs> Sorry to anybody that does. Um, I find, uh, A, I don't like the platform. Um, I don't really maybe understand it enough. And I haven't had um, a lot of experience on that platform for it to work, um, not just for selling books, which I don't think Twitter really does, uh, although I have heard some instances where it did. But for... Um, me as who I am, um, I mostly like there's very limited things that I like in this world and it's books, planners <laughs> and, you know, cute things. Um, and so if I was talking about that on Twitter, it might be kind of boring if I just kept talking about like pens and stuff in my books. Like I just don't see it as an avenue for me. And so I'm not the best person to talk about it. Um, I Same with Pinterest. Um, I never got into Pinterest. I know how it can be a very good social media for people to use because it's a very sales-driven 
uh, marketplace, so it's not market like a library, but it's sales driven. Um, so people with Etsy shops and stuff, they always use uh, Pinterest. But even when I did own an Etsy shop, um, I didn't use it. <laughs> I just, I'm not, I don't have time to pin. Um, I use it for like myself to look at inspiration when I'm writing books or just to like search different things, but I just don't use it in a very um, strategic way. Um, I use Facebook. I use Instagram. Um, I have this channel, which is not really for my books, but still. Um, and I use TikTok. And those are the ones that I'm on. When I started, um, I tried everything. So that was a huge, another big mistake is I tried everything. I spread myself too thin. Nothing was really working. And so it wasn't until I limited myself um, to three main social media plus this channel that I realized now I have time to actually um, show up on those channels. So just make sure that you limit where you're going to be present because you, that way you will create better content and more thoughtful content. And that's what people want, right? Um, another thing you might want to do is research what works on each platform. Um, so you could have posts that kind of go across a few different platforms, but they won't always work. Also, what works on Facebook will not work on TikTok, right? So you want to research top performing posts and content on the specific platform that you're researching it for, that you're doing your homework for, um, and not copy it, but emulate the uh, um, idea behind it, not so much the style maybe even. Um, TikTok is an easy example because everything on TikTok is like people biting each other basically and you're using other people's sounds and you're just trying to one up each other on um, how you're using this content that was already created. But take a look at Facebook. Take a look at what other authors are doing on Facebook. Um, if you have author friends, join their reader groups. I'm in a lot of reader groups for my author friends. And I it's, I find it very helpful because I can see the kind of stuff that they do in there that their readers really like. And then I try it out in my reader book uh, group. And um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But hey, um, I'm taking the time to learn what my readers want, what they want to interact with. And more importantly, what the algorithm of that specific platform picks up on because if the algorithm doesn't pick up your content then your readers your followers whoever they're not going to see it it's unfortunate but just because somebody is in say your facebook group doesn't mean they're going to see your notifications especially since this whole year of facebook kind of like revamping their entire back end um, and with um, the apple um, privacy settings coming out there's been a lot of things that um made it harder for your posts to be seen. So make sure that you are doing your research to see what kind of posts people like most, because if they like them and they interact with them, then chances are you will be seen in that algorithm on that specific platform. Um, the other one that I'm sure you guys have heard before, but it's very important to note um, is the 80-20 rule don't sell <laughs> just don't be that door-to-door knife salesman who is like it can cut boots it can cut tins like whatever um you don't want to do that um you want to be authentic and personable and nobody likes somebody who's always pitching and pitching and trying to get them to spend money um so the 80 20 rule is 20 percent of your posts wherever you are should be about your books and 80 percent should be about something else um, you can decide what that something else is. Uh, for me, that something else is usually what I'm reading, um, some behind the scenes, which is not necessarily about my books, but like just my working life or personal life, um, planner stuff, lots of planner stuff, uh, fun, inspirational quotes and things like that. So that's kind of how I break down my posts pretty much across all my social media platforms. And the same for TikTok. Um, I have some posts for the most part that are just like fun, funny, what I think is funny. <laughs> I have a weird sense of humor. So probably not a lot of people think it's funny, but um, like most of my content, 80% of it is just like stuff that I just want to pick my phone up and do because it makes me laugh. It makes me smile. And it's just something I want to do. And then 20% of it is me showing books. Now I have seen authors on that platform that sell, 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 and it works for them. Um, 
it's I'm sure if I did it on that specific platform, it could work too, but that's not who I am. Um, I don't want to, I like, it's not, it's nothing against those authors. It's whatever floats your boat. I personally, like, it's not for me. I feel weird always pitching. And so, and it's exhausting. So I would rather have fun and interact with people and form a community. And if they want to get my books as a result, then they do. Um, and if they don't, maybe they'll tell a friend about it. Right. So you just want to kind of form relationships there, even though they're not face to face, but wherever you are, form relationships, don't sell. Um, you also need to think about narrowing down your messaging. So before you kind of go crazy on social media and try to figure out like what it's going to look like, what kind of posts you'll do, you want to narrow down that messaging. You want to know like, what is your intention? What is your goal? Um, what do you want to convey to people? I mean, of course, yes, you want to convey to them that you are an author, but what kind of author are you? More importantly, what kind of person are you? Um, what do you like? What do you dislike? Uh, this goes back to your author branding, right? So if you watch um, my video on um, author branding and that um, kind of advice, this goes back to that. Figure out what your goal is, what your messaging is. And it could be different for every single platform, but more often than not, it'll stay the same because your author name is your persona and the way who you are is uh, a brand, kind of. I hate saying that, but it is. Um, so you want to figure out what kind of message you have and then use that always in the back of your mind when you're creating content to say like okay I'm making this video I'm taking this photograph or I'm writing this post um, in the back end just behind in your mind think does this go with my main messaging and if the answer is yes great and if it's no just not necessarily scrap it but maybe think about tailoring it somehow that it gets closer to that original messaging that you said you were going to deliver every time because if you do enough of that um, that's what your readers will come to expect and so when you do something out of the ordinary a it's jarring um, and b they've been looking for this right they signed up to follow you to be on your platform to be in your like close-knit circle um, for this content and so you want to give them that then you also want to think about the about me sections. It's very easy to just put like a link onto your website or your link tree link or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> say your name, call it a day, right? You want to be very, very strategic with this. Um, your about me is going to be different on every single platform because every single platform we have will kind of give us a different result of what we want. Um, also, you might want to think about switching up those links, right? Like it's good to kind of have your website there sometimes. Um, but once in a while, let's say if you have a pre-order, that's what you're going to put there. Um, if you're having a giveaway, um, put that there. If you're collecting ARC readers, put that there. Um, if you want to cross promote platforms, put that there, right? Like, um, I've seen a lot of people put their Instagram link on TikTok and their Instagram link has a link tree link with a whole bunch of other links, right? Um, so just be strategic about what you put there. Also be strategic about how you describe yourself, right? Like, don't just say, I am an author. I write this, that, whatever who are you like what do you like right like in my instagram profile i definitely mention i like stationery because they're going to see that a lot and i mentioned that i live off of coffee because that's what i live off um i mean i also live off of wine but i felt that like coffee might be a little bit like more appropriate <laughs> to put on there <laughs> so um you kind of want to think about what you put there um and how you introduce yourself for facebook make sure you fill everything out there's lots of sections on facebook and about me that you can do you can use the announcement feature and all of that pin things to the top um so just be strategic about these sections because people um it they, it might not happen every day but they will look at that and that's where you're driving people, right? Because if that, it's, if you have like a dead and kind of static about me section, then nobody's clicking that. And if they're not clicking that, then how are they going to buy your books? <laughs> um, the last, no, not the last. We'll do another one, quick one after that. So second last um, tip I have for you guys is pre-schedule your content if you can. Um, it is such a lifesaver like it, it's really like the amount of time that you're going to get sucked out of your day if you don't pre-schedule your content is immense and that's time you could be writing or working on something else right um and so if you can pre-schedule 
please do so. Um, it's different for everybody. Um, I use Buffer. I really like it. I think it's about like $15 a month and you can add as many social media platforms to it as you can. I mean, maybe not as many, but the limit is like 10 and who uses that many. And I use that for both my author business and my cover design business. And sometimes even for my personal stuff, just because I do it every single Sunday, get it out of the way. I pre-schedule everything and then I'm free. Now for TikTok, you can't pre-schedule, but what you can do is create drafts. Um, so you can create drafts in TikTok and then every day, whatever time you decide, you go on and you publish those drafts. Now, if you're going to use TikTok, I know the recommended um, to start is three, two to three times a day. That's insane. Um, I don't have time for that. I don't do it. But my goal with TikTok is not to like immensely grow and become some kind of TikTok influencer. I just want to kind of be where my audience, my YA audience is, right? So I just want to show up there. Um, and so, and again, I do it for fun. So I only do it once a day. Sometimes I skip days if I have a deadline or I'm super busy. So it's up to you what you do there. But pre-schedule as much as you can because it will save you so much time later. And also... Once you pre-schedule, you can take a look at your calendar for the week or the month, however you want to do it, and see where the holes are and go back to that messaging and see if that works, right? So you want to really um, see everything, how it's going to look across all your platforms um, and make sure that messaging is there, that there's no like spelling mistakes, like just double check everything. And it it's, I love it. Like I literally, like if you could do anything with your social media, this is my number one advice to you is just pre schedule all of your content content. If you don't want to spend money on like an app that pushes the posts out, then at least have them all ready and sitting somewhere on your computer or on your phone or wherever with all the copy, all the hashtags, everything ready for every single day and use that and just like manually post still yourself by grabbing from these areas. But whatever you can do to get yourself ahead of the stuff is really, really good. And then the last tip is have fun. <laughs> It's social media. It's there so we can be social. So <clears throat> have fun. Don't think too much about like, oh, is this right? Is it not right? I mean, obviously don't say anything that could offend anybody, but that's a given, right? Um, but be yourself. Um, have fun with it. Make new friends with it. Like I've met so many amazing people on social media, a lot of authors that I really love now and have become good friends with. And so just go out there and, and have a blast, right? It's a lot less intimidating than meeting someone in person. So take advantage of that. Social media can be really crazy, but it can also be really, really fun. And I think that's the whole point of it is not just using it for marketing, for your author career, but using it for your soul in a whole way. Um, you can get really sucked into it, of course, but if you give it a chance and if you give people a chance if you do it correctly um then you can have a lot of fun with it too and of course as soon as you're not having fun walk away for a while wash your hands of it put it aside and then come back to it when you feel like it no one is telling you you absolutely have to be on social media i know writers that have no social media presence and they do very very well so don't feel like you have to do all these things. Just do what feels right to you. Have a blast with it and just persevere. <laughs> so with all of that, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you're subscribed. I do have videos coming out every single week on a variety of topics, all author and writing adjacent related. Um, and as a last bit of news, very quickly, I just wanted to let you guys know I am almost done with that resource library. I have a few um, really, really good uh, solid materials ready to just get started and then I'll keep refilling it, but I will have news for you on how to get access to it. Um, for absolutely free, of course, um, next week in next week's video. So make sure that you watch that one for all the freebies. So with that said, I hope you guys, as always, stay magical. And I will talk to you next week. Bye.